Hello viewers. Today for refurbishing I have a Panasonic 2.4 GHz telephone. This is model KX-TG2226 and uh, this is one of the waterproof shockproof models. I did get the original box with this telephone as you can see here some ding dong opened it on the bottom. It does come with some of the original accessories such as the ha uh, bleh, the headset, obviously it comes with the handset. It also comes with the belt clip and the telephone cord, so that's really cool. But it did come with, I mean it did not come with a critical uh, component such as the power supply. So for the moment I have rigged up my, uh, my test power supply. This is uh, one that I use often when testing things. It's uh, a basic wall wart. I have 6 volt and 9 volt one. This is a 6 volt because that's what Panasonic takes, at least in this instance. And it's got this little contraption on the end. It's a blank plug. And I have this plug which I can wire to a um, any kind of adapter. The other end, you know, whatever you, you want to call that piece uh, to fit pretty much infinite number of telephones as long as I have the size. Um, and so that's that's what I have for now. Um, of course that's just a, a rig up just to use while I'm testing it and restoring it and when I put it into service I'll get a more uh, permanent adapter for it. I will uh, show the the headset and the bell clip and we'll test those out once I have the handset restored. So this telephone is in the shop because it has a couple of problems. Firstly it just needs to be cleaned and uh, it does have a couple issues. The base unit uh, I've already checked out uh, off video and uh, the base unit is fine. It looks like it has remnants of somebody's lunch in there but uh, otherwise the base unit is fully functional. So now we're going to do an initial checkout on the handset because uh, it does seem to have a couple of issues. The first problem is with the buttons. Um, the numerics are not nearly as sensitive as they should be. Um, get pound and style work okay but uh, the rest of these numerics don't really work properly if you press them with a good amount of force they will all register but not as, as well as they should these buttons all down here seem to work okay um, there is one critical problem with this handset and that is that the off button doesn't work at all so as you can see it does not work you can turn it on but it does not work. Um, what's going on with the base here? I think my uh, adapter is getting a little finicky here. Okay. Um, but we can do speaker, we can do talk. No, I guess not. Okay. What's going on here? Alright, let's try that again. We have speaker go back to talk again this is not as sensitive as it should be I'm really gotta give it a lot of force you have to register so that's not good um, volume works um, so everything pretty much checks out in here except for the dial pad and the off key more specifically so um, I'm gonna open this up and give it just the dial pad a clean and then we'll see what we have to do about the off key and then it uh, looks like there's some uh, remnants of lunch in the speaker as well, so we'll get that cleaned out. Um, and this will make for an interesting repair because I have never uh, repaired one of these waterproof telephones to the extent that I'm going to have to do with this one. Because typically when I clean these, I just clean them with you know, a good amount of water and it's fine because they're water resistant. But this one I'm going to have to split this apart and uh, do some internal cleaning. So... Um, I can't turn it off. So that concludes the initial checkout of this telephone. Now I'm going to begin to disassemble it. I like this design of the battery pack. It's much better than, um, or I mean the battery cover rather. It's much better than um, the ones that you got to slide off like that. Okay, so I've undone the screws. 
and it looks like this is going to split apart just like a regular phone with the exception of a gasket in there. These telephones, when it comes to waterproof telephones, are not as good as the Uniden waterproof telephone, um, but they're better than, you know, average old telephones, so I like these quite a bit. I'm going to open up the headset jack. That's an important thing to remember to do when you're splitting the telephones, and hopefully this will uh, just begin to come apart here. I really hate doing this part of the this assembly. I'm not sure what this little uh, plastic thing is there. I have a feeling there may be a screw under there or something. It's not letting go from that that angle. Let's see if I can get that off. Yep, there's another screw. That's why you always have to be very careful when you're working with these telephones or really any piece of electronics if it doesn't come don't force it because there's usually a reason why it's not coming okay now it looks like the speaker wires are uh, holding it back here for the speaker phone so I'm going to go ahead and remove that and figure out how that comes out and then we'll be back on the video once I get the handset fully split. Okay, so it looks like we have a gasket that goes in here and I'm going to be very careful when pulling this out as to not break it because it's very thin. I'm going to lay this on the table just like it came out of the telephone so we don't lose the orientation of it. There's also another gasket inside the speaker, which I'm going to pull out and put over there. So at this point, um, the telephone back can now be cleaned. And the reason why I like to split these apart when I clean them is because like that junk right there on the sides is kind of nasty. And you won't clean that out unless you really split this apart and clean it this way. So that's what, um, that's why I do this. So here's the insides of the telephone. I'm going to go ahead and remove this board now from the telephone. Now that all the screws are removed, we can pull out the antenna. Uh, I think this wire should come out of there. Oh, it doesn't seem to want to. Alright, that's going to be a problem. Alright, well I guess that doesn't come out. Um, I may have to unsolder that for the moment to get this board off, uh, which is really, really irritating uh, because that's just an extra hassle to have to deal with. Um, yeah, I, I guess that doesn't come out of there. Alright, um... Yeah, see, I figured there was going to be some sort of a catch given this is it's got some waterproofing to it. Alright, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and see if I can figure out how to do this. Alright, so I am in fact going to have to undo the uh, unsolder the antenna, which is, is okay in a sense because these, uh, these joints are kind of shoddy anyways. So I'm going to redo those uh, when I put them back on. Hopefully once I remove those, um, or once I remove this antenna, I'll be able to pull the board out of the telephone. Uh, but I'm not completely confident I'll be able to do that yet. While I wait for the soldering iron to heat up, it looks like the, the uh, charge contacts can be pulled out from the side like this. So that's um, possibly a start to getting this removed. Whoops. Yeah, I paused the video too early. That was in fact what was holding it in. Uh, the board is now completely free. And um, I actually think I'm not going to bother to unsolder that because I can work with it like this. Uh, it's not ideal, uh, but I can work with it like this. Oh, uh, yuck. No wonder why the thing don't work. Oh my goodness. Well, that's uh, 
answers that question. So the way I clean these dial pads, well not these, we'll clean that in a moment. The way I clean the electronic board is, um, I hate that this antenna is attached like that. Uh, but anyways, that's just, uh, anyways, I have to just deal with it. Um, the way I clean these electronic boards is I, um, I take a cotton swab like this and uh, I use this stuff. Not even going to bother trying to pronounce it. And uh, I clean it off like this. I'll demonstrate a small portion of it and then um, I'll pause the video and clean it off. But actually first, let's get you a good view of just how nasty this really is. This is the worst I've ever seen. There's so much face junk in you. All that yellow stuff shouldn't be there. It's all like oils and stuff. I guess from people's faces, uh, but it's really bad, and that causes a, a a problem because the the conductive material in the buttons can't hit the electronic board properly with all that junk on there. So, um, oh no, I gotta do this again. So what I do here is I take this. And I, this one I'm going to do in chunks because it's so bad. But you just kind of start to go over here. I may even just take a, a generic cloth and go over this once because it's uh, there's just so much on here. I mean, I've seen ridiculous boards before, but this is this is out of hand. I mean, look at that just from one uh, just from one stinking button. So I'm going to do that over the whole board, and we'll get that cleaned. Alright, so now as you can see, the dialer is clean, or the, dial, the electronic board is clean. The dialer itself uh, is still very dirty. So I'm going to clean this off. And again, this is probably one of the worst cases I've ever seen of junk and dialer pads. Uh, so I'm going to clean this off and then we're going to give it a test and uh, hopefully hopefully all the conductive material on this dialer is still good and it's just the, the dirt that was preventing it from working or not dirt, whatever that junk is, I don't even know. Alright, the dialer has been cleaned. All that junk is gone. So now we're going to give this a test. I'm going to put the battery on here and I'll just have to kind of hold it in place because it relies on the, um, the what do you call it being in place, the handset back cover and I ain't putting it together just to test it so uh, this is going to be a little bit interesting but I should be able to do it eventually. Alright, and this is not working as well as I thought it would. Okay. Gee, what the heck? Okay, this is really, uh, really, really finicky here. Um, I can't get a good connection on the battery. I may have to just throw the back cover back on here just so I can use the battery. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but I got it in place. Now we're going to test the uh, the keys now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, let's see, is it off work? Talk, off. Speaker off. So off works now. That's really all I wanted to know. So it was just all the dirt on there. Um, so that should be working fine now. So now that that's been repaired, um, I'm going back and forth with whether I should take off the, uh, the way you want to call it, the antenna there. And I am going to take it off because the handset 
front cover here has plenty of that junk in there especially right around the torque and off buttons and if I don't uh, give this handset a good clean that junk will get right back in the dialer and uh, I don't want that to happen so I am in fact going to remove the solder from these uh, um, oh actually uh, yeah I'm going to do that and then I think I can remove the the uh, receiver capsule here if I can't then I'll have to unsolder that as well um, but let me see if I can get that off alright so the good news is the receiver capsule does in fact come out so that won't be an issue put that aside so now once the soldering iron runs uh, <laughs> runs away warms up I'm losing it once the uh, soldering iron warms up We'll remove the antenna and then uh, we can give the uh, whole handset a wash. In the time being, I'm going to uh, clean off this back uh, handset cover. See, there's all that junk uh, on the sides there and whatnot. So, we're going to clean that off. Um, I'm going to get all the junk out of the speaker so that'll be nice and clean again. Now the back of the handset is clean, so we're going to set that aside because that's finished. And I'm going to see if we can remove the uh, antenna now. Zoom this thing in here. Okay. Now, now that this is free from the front cover, I will clean the front cover. Oh, that's zoomed in. Get the zoom off there. See all that junk in there. It's disgusting. It's also not in focus. Yeah, that's kind of ridiculous. Actually, the front's not too bad. There's some junk in the speaker. and Yeah, we'll get all that cleaned out. The handset uh, front cover has now been cleaned and uh, it is unfortunately exhibiting some signs of wear. The rubber is coming off where it meets the charge cradle and there's a little bit of deterioration around the earpiece but it's otherwise it's clean now. So uh, I believe that is all the cleaning that I'm going to do to this telephone. So at this point I'm going to put the antenna back on I still this design is just unfathomable to me but whatever and actually I'm going to uh, seat the uh, receiver capsule first and then I'll put it back on alright so I got the receiver capsule in place put the dialer pad back in and the whole main board is seated back onto uh, the front handset contraption thing whatever you want to call it so now at this point I'm gonna put the antenna back on which uh, attaches to a very strange configuration there's a little bit way too much solder on here but since that's how it was that's how it will stay actually you know what that's not a good theory let's fix this up a little bit I don't know why these joints keep cooling off like that. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but I think it's just going to have to be that way. Okay, so now that that's back in place, I'm going to test everything. Make sure that connections are good. Those connections or whatever. Um, so we'll play the stupid games with the battery again. And if I can get this to work this time, actually I could. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, speakerphone, that's working. One, one, do we have buttons? And off, on, off. 
these aren't aren't as sensitive as I'd like them to be. But I think what's happening is the conductive material is simply wearing out and it needs to be replenished. But I'm not going to take the time to do that, um, you know, until it really needs to be done, which is not right now. So, just, oh, I'm tourists leaving in a dumb video. Alright, so all the buttons is working. Seems to be connecting to the baseline. So now I will put the, uh, get the zoom wall fitter. Now I will uh, put the speakerphone thingamajig back in the in the base unit here, uh, which involves this contraption. This is a very strange uh, setup, but I'd rather have this than the screws. No, oh, I just did a major goof here. I put the uh, speakerphone where the receiver capsule is supposed to go. So now I got to take this out. And uh, swap these two. Okay, so that would explain why this wasn't going on the way I thought it should. So now, put this back. And that's like that. And now I can put this into here. And now this will fit on here. And this is going to take a little bit of fidgeting because I don't exactly recall how this went. So I'll pause the video. Alright, now that is how it's supposed to go. So, now that that's back in place, I will put the screws in and then I'll put the gaskets back on and we'll be ready to go for another test. And then we got to clean the base still too. The uh, charge contacts have a fair bit of junk on them, so I'm going to give those a clean. Alright, those should certainly do a fair bit better job charging now. Actually can make contact with the contacts on the base. This has kind of an odd way of working. These actually are situated on the side, which is something that I have never seen before. And they stick in here like this. At least they're supposed to. Alright, am I doing this wrong here? Or what the heck? Yeah, they go in like that. I think I was covering the video up, so I'll do that again. They just slide in there like that, and they get screwed on. All right, now those contacts are in place, and uh, it's just about time to close up the entire unit. First, I will put this gasket back on here, and uh, this is going to be fun, I think, getting this to really go back on here the right way. So I'm going to pause the video for this, because I'm sure it'll be boring. Well, actually, that went on relatively painlessly, so now I will uh, close this up. As it turns out, I had the uh, headset jack gasket put in improperly. That's how it's supposed to fit, like that. Okay, so I had to lift up the board to put that back on, but sometimes it's what you have to do to make sure you put the thing back together. So it just goes to show you do this a hundred times and you still make mistakes occasionally. All right, so let's put this back on here one more time. And uh, I'll put the last four screws in. I'm going to put the battery in and we'll give it a test. I can see that good enough. All right. Yeah, these buttons are not as good as I would like them to be. But, like I said before, as long as they all work with, you know, reasonable force, which they do, um, that's where I'm going to leave it. You know, these are these are only rubber buttons. They look like plastic ones, but they're rubber. And uh, they just don't last. The plastic buttons do, but you got to give these a little bit extra force after. This is made in 03, so... What is that? Oh, I don't know. What is that? Uh, 13 years? Especially all the junk that's been in here over the years. Not so bad. 
these they all work. That's just, that's what I was concerned about getting the off button to work, but um, it's working now. So, all right. So I'm gonna put those last couple uh, screws in, and then we'll be done. Alright, that's working well enough. Now I'm going to clean the base unit. And I'm just going to do a regular, just a wash with a towel out of there and get everything cleaned up. And then uh, we'll look at the headset and the belt clip. Okay, now that it's cleaned up as reasonably well as I'd like it to be. Well, i got a phone line plugged in. We'll give it a test now. We'll call time and temp. Good afternoon. We offer checking choices that are right for our customers, offering information at local branches or at peoples.com. Peoples United Bank. The battery seems to be holding surprisingly well. Put the uh, mute on. I'm not sure what that is. I gotta get the manual for this. I'm not sure if this is a DSS or if it's a dual band or what the deal is with this phone. Um, I'm gonna turn on another telephone here. Turn on this one's on the same line. And I'm gonna talk into this other telephone here. Check. One, two, three. Whoops, oh boy. Check. One, two, three. Testing, testing. Why is this so feedback? Check. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello, hello. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the uh, transmitter works fine. Send and receive. So let me get the, uh, the box out here and we'll take a look at this headset. Well, here's the belt clip. Yeah, I definitely want on here, so I'll put that on there now. And there we have it. Belt clip looks like uh, belt clip looks like it was never used. So there's that. And then here's the uh, the headset. I'm not gonna open this up right now, but uh, here it is. It's a mono headset. Looks like it's pretty decent quality. So uh, I'll give that a try out someday, and then here's the phone cord. This also looks like it was never used. Um, there you have it. There's the Panasonic KX TG2226, and uh, I'll get another video of this thing once I have it in service. So thank you for watching. Comment, subscribe, and out.